August 18th, 2023. Psalm 79. O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the dead bodies of your servants for food to the birds of the heavens. Eat the flesh of your godly ones to the beasts of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem. <clears throat> and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scoffing and derision to those around us. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath upon the nations which do not know you, and upon the kingdom which do not call upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember the iniquities of our forefathers against us. Let your compassion come quickly to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Let there be none among the nations in our sight. Vengeance for the blood of your servants which has been shed. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power, preserve those who are doomed to die and return to our neighbor sevenfold into their bosom. The reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord, so we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. To all generations we will tell of your praise. Psalm 79. Proverbs 18. He who separates himself seeks his own desire. He who quarrels against all sound wisdom. A fool does not delight in understanding, but only in reveal, revealing his own mind. When a wicked man comes, content comes also. And with dishonor comes scorn. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. To show partiality to the wicked is not good, nor to thrust aside the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips bring strife, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is for ruin, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a whisperer are like dainty morsels, and they go down into the innermost, innermost parts of the body. He also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runs into it and is safe. A rich man's wealth is his strong tower, and like a high wall in his own imagination. Before destruction the heart of a man is haughty, but humility goes before honor. He who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? The mind of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The first to plead his case seems right until another comes and examines him. The cast lot puts an end to strife and decides between the mighty ones. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a citadel. With the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the product of his own lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor man utters supplications, but the rich man answers roughly. A man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. John 9 As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned, nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay on the spittle of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went away and washed and came back, saying, Therefore the neighbors and those who previously saw this man 
him as a beggar, were saying, Is it not this the one who used to sit and beg? Others were saying, This is he. So others were saying, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the one. So they were saying to him, How then were your eyes opened? He answered, The man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to Salome and wash. So I went away and washed and received sight. They said to me, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisee the man who was formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath on the day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisee answered, uh, Then the Pharisee also were asking him again who, how he received his sight. And he said to them, He applied clay to my eyes, and I washed and see. Therefore some of the Pharisees were saying, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, How can a man who is a sinner perform such things, such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you say about him, since he opened your eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. The Jews then did not believe it, of him that he had been blind and had received sight until they called the parents of the very one who had received his sight and questioned them saying is this your son who was who you say was born blind <laughs> then how does he now see his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but now he now sees we do not know or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said to this said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed him to be Christ, he was <laughs> to be put out of the synagogue. For this reason his parents said he is of age, ask him. So a second time they called a man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He then answered, Whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You do not want to become his disciples too, do you? They reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Well, here is an amazing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his, will, does his will, he hears him. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you teaching us? So they put him out. Jesus heard that they had put him out, and finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world so that those who do not may see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, We are not blind too, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say we see, your sin remains. John 9. Ugh. <clears throat>